This is Pathology Chapter 2, Inflammation and Repair, Lecture 3. Bone Tissue Repair Repair of bone injury is similar to the process that takes place in fibrous connective tissue, except that it involves the creation of bone tissue. The granulation tissue forms a matrix upon which bone-forming cells called osteoblasts lay down immature bone called osteoid. This process of bone tissue repair is the same process that occurs when an implant is placed and osteointegration takes place. Factors delaying bone formation include blood supply at the site, growth factors, edema, injury, infection, removal of osteoblast producing tissues, excessive or inadequate movement of bone tissue, and factors influencing repair of bone include nutrition, age, and tobacco use. Injuries to teeth include attrition, bruxism, abrasion, abfraction, erosion, bulimia, and methamphetamine abuse. Attrition is caused by tooth to tooth wear and may be observed both in primary and the permanent dentition. It is characterized by flattening of the occlusal cusps on molar teeth, causing wear facets. The wear matches the opposing teeth. Bruxism is the grinding and clenching of teeth for non-functional purposes. It can be caused by occlusal interferences, stress, tension, or seizure disorders. The signs and symptoms of bruxism include wear facets, abnormal rate of attrition, hypertrophy of the masticatory muscles, increased muscle tone, muscle tenderness, muscle fatigue, cheek biting, and pain in the temporomandibular joint area. Tooth mobility and pulpal sensitivity to cold may also be present. In order to manage bruxism, occlusal adjustments may be needed in order to eliminate the interferences and also fabrication of an acrylic splint or night guard may be useful in preventing further destruction. Abfraction is the microfracture of tooth structure in areas of concentration of stress, usually caused by bruxism. They may be related to fatigue, flexure, fracture, and deformation of tooth structure. They also may occur in combination with abrasion. The appearance is typically a wedge-shaped lesion at the cervical areas of teeth. The preventive treatment is fabrication of an acrylic splint or adjustment of the bite. In the image on the right, you can see an abfraction lesion in conjunction with an abrasion lesion. Abrasion is the pathologic wearing away of tooth structure that results from a repetitive mechanical habit. It is most frequently seen on root surfaces with gingival recession. The uh, top right image shows the mechanical repetitive damage that is done to the interproximal surfaces of teeth by aggressive hygiene scaling. This picture here shows a typical abrasion near the cervical area, which is a dished out area. This image here shows an abfraction or several abfraction lesions, which are more wedge in shape and look like somebody took an axe and tried to cut off a piece of the tooth. Erosion is the loss of tooth structure as a result of chemicals without bacterial involvement. Tooth structure may be lost around a restoration, making the restoration stand out, distinguishing it from abrasion or attrition. 
you can correlate the location of erosion and abrasion with the patient's history. The upper photograph shows erosion at the cervicals and especially on the lower, usually caused by gastric reflux. This image shows the typical appearance of erosion from lemon sucking, which usually presents on the facial surfaces of the maxillary anterior teeth. This is a typical presentation for bulimia, which is usually seen on the lingual surfaces of maxillary teeth. This is erosion presenting on the occlusal surfaces of posterior teeth. You can see the absence of enamel where you can see the yellow of the dentin showing through and the amalgam restoration that was placed in the tooth sometime before is still intact because the acids do not erode away the amalgam. Potential causes for erosion include industrial factors, intraorally applied cocaine hydrochloride, overuse of soft drinks, baby bottle decay, sucking on lemons, or chronic vomiting. Bulimia is an eating disorder characterized by food binges followed by self-induced vomiting. The patient with bulimia maintains a normal body weight but is secretive about eating habits. The patient may exhibit an electrolyte imbalance and or malnutrition, irritation of oral mucosa and lips, as well as traumatic lesions on the back of the fingers. The management of the oral health of a bulimic patient includes fluoride rinses and fluoride toothpaste, rinsing with water after purging, avoiding toothbrushing immediately after vomiting, use of a very soft toothbrush, and may require full coverage restorative dental treatment to correct the lost enamel. Methamphetamine abuse, otherwise known as meth mouth, is the rapid destruction of teeth as a result of the acid content of the methamphetamine, decrease in salivary flow, cravings for high sugar beverages, and lack of oral hygiene. There are many causes of injuries to oral soft tissues. An aspirin burn is caused by the topical application of an aspirin, which is a common misuse of this product. The tissue becomes necrotic and white. The surface may slough off, leaving a painful ulcer. The ulcer usually heals in 7 to 21 days. A phenol burn is caused by phenol used in dentistry as a cavity sterilizing agent and a cauterizing agent. The phenol will cause whitening and sloughing of the area that it comes into contact with as a result of tissue destruction. Dental materials that can cause burns include phenol, sodium hypochlorite, ferric sulfate, formocresol, and eudenol. Electric burns may be seen in infants or young children who have chewed on an electrical cord. They may be quite extensive, damaging oral tissue and even tooth buds. They may cause permanent disfigurement and scarring. Treatment may include plastic surgery, oral surgery, and orthodontic therapy. Hot foods can burn the palate, usually pizza or hot cheese or soup, hot coffee can produce the type of lesion seen in the image on the right. Also products containing hydrogen peroxide or eugenol. Lesions associated with cocaine use are located in the midline of the hard palate and may vary from ulcers to keratotic lesions to exophytic reactive lesions as a result of smoking crack cocaine. 
Necrotic ulcers of the tongue and epiglottis have been reported as a result of freebasing cocaine. Lesions from self-induced injuries include chronic lip, cheek, or tongue biting, trauma to the gingiva from a fingernail, and lesions may range from ulcerations to epithelial hyperplasia and hyperkeratosis. The image on the top right shows an ulceration caused by fingernails, and on the lower right, a hyperkeratosis caused by tongue biting. A hematoma is an accumulation of blood within tissue as a result of trauma. It appears as a red to purple to bluish gray mass. It is frequently seen on labial or buccal mucosa. A traumatic ulcer may be caused by cheek, lip, or tongue biting, denture irritation, mucosal injury, or overzealous brushing. It usually heals within 7 to 14 days unless the trauma persists. In some cases, it may also require a biopsy. A traumatic granuloma is the result of persistent trauma. The appearance is hard or indurated and raised. Traumatic granulomas usually heal rapidly after biopsy. Frictional keratosis is a form of hyperkeratosis caused by chronic rubbing or friction against an oral mucosal surface. It can resemble a callus on the skin. The appearance is opaque and white. In order to treat frictional keratosis, you must first identify the cause of the trauma and then eliminate it. Frictional keratosis must be differentiated from idiopathic leukoplakia because leukoplakia may be premalignant. Linea alba is a white raised line most commonly found on the buccal mucosa at the occlusal plane. It may be the result of a teeth clenching habit. Sometimes the pattern of the teeth can be seen in the lesion. Microscopic appearance is epithelial hyperplasia and hyperkeratosis. No treatment is necessary. Nicotinic stomatitis is a benign lesion typically associated with pipe and or cigar smoking and may also occur with cigarette smoking. The initial appearance is redness or erythema. Then it increases in opacity as keratinization occurs. Raised red areas occur at the openings of ducts of inflamed minor salivary glands. Tobacco pouch or smokeless tobacco keratosis is a white lesion located where the chewing tobacco is placed, most often in the mucobuccal fold. Early lesions may have a granular or wrinkled appearance. Long-standing lesions may be more opaquely white and have a corrugated surface. Treatment includes tobacco cessation and may require biopsy. Long-term exposure to chewing tobacco has been associated with increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma. This concludes Lecture 3.